Hello. In this video, we'll be looking at one very specific way of appraising a long-term project. We'll be looking at the accounting rate of return, frequently referred to as the ARR. This is part of a, a larger topic on long-term decision making, where we're looking at investments that um, will last for a long time so that it will involve the outlay of substantial funds and we have to make sure that these projects are going to be viable before we consider going ahead. There are three main ways to financially appraise such a long-term project. There's the payback method, the accounting rate of return and a variety of discounted cash flow techniques. Today we are looking at the accounting rate of return. This is the approach, um, the only approach that's based on profit and it looks at the profits earned from investment. Um, it takes the average annual profits before interest and tax as a ratio of the initial investment. There are a number of ways to calculate the accounting rate of return and you'll see them um, in different types of textbooks. In particular, you'll often see one which uses an average investment at this point here. Um, whichever method you choose, whichever method you use to calculate the accounting rate of return, if you're in the corporate world, as long as you stick to one method and use that consistently and have your um, target using that method, then it really doesn't matter. So for this particular video, we'll be looking at the average annual profits before interest and tax divided by the initial investment. Let's have a look at an example. So here we've got a project, a large project, costing £240,000, which has the following net cash inflows. And then at the end of the project, we sell the machinery for £50,000. So what is the accounting rate of return? Well, the first thing I want to do is look at the total cash flows. And if we convert that those into an average cash flow, oops, we'll take 330000 divide by 5, and that will get us to 66 thousand pounds per annum. We're still in cash flows. Now to convert cash flows to profit, we take some of the, the key um, non-cash accounting um, concepts and then apply it to that cash. And the key such concept as an expense that needs to be charged to the profit and loss account is depreciation. In this case, depreciation, we can calculate it as our 240,000 minus the net residual value, 50,000, divide it by 5, and our depreciation is going to be 38,000 pounds per annum, which will get us to a profit figure of 28,000 pounds. And then the accounting rate of return is going to be our annual profits on average divided by our initial investment, 240,000, and that comes to 11.6%. Now, 11.6% doesn't really mean anything. We don't know whether that is good or whether that is bad. What we have to do, just like we had to do for the payback period, is we have to compare that to a target. And then we'll know, does this particular project exceed that target? So if we had a target of 10%, then we would know that this project is above that target at 11.6, and so we would go ahead with it if we are using the accounting rate of return as our main financial tool 
to assess the viability of the project. If we look at the advantages and disadvantages of using accounting rate of return as a tool, then really um, it does have a number of things in its favour. Compared to the payback period, it uses all the cash flows. It is a very familiar concept, very similar to return on capital employed. And so it uses information that is readily available, profits and the investment. It is a method that is familiar to businesses and it is pretty simple and easy to calculate. But, and it's a big but, it uses profits rather than cash flows. And profits are affected by things like the um, depreciation <clears throat> policy that you selected and any other non-cash accounting um, concepts included in your profit figure. So cash flow is a much purer um, concept. It is just the money that comes in, less the money that goes out. The problem is also it is a very much a relative measure. It doesn't take into account the size of the project. So you could have a project with a million pounds average profit and a project with 10,000 pounds average profit all with the same accounting rate of return. So it can be limiting because it just doesn't take into account the size of the project, the amount of the profits that could be generated from that profit project. It also doesn't take into account the length of the project. You could have the same accounting rate of return for a 10-year project and a three-year project. It could be the same. Which is going to be better? Well, we can't tell. We have to have that comparative figure. And perhaps most importantly of all, it ignores the time value of money. So the accounting rate of return, whilst useful, has limited worth as a single measure of long-term project viability. You would tend to use it as one of the measures, along with the payback period and um, a discounted cash flow technique. Thank you very much.